message reaches each and every person as you have intended it. And if there's someone here, someone listening, Lord, that cannot say, He lives within my heart, that something would be said or done here today that would just make them want to reach out, call out to you, Lord. Don't let them leave this service or say a final goodbye until they have claimed you, that they can say, He lives within my heart. We just thank you and praise you, Father, that we can once again be in corporate worship together, though I know we have been worshiping you all this time in our homes in numerous places, numerous times of the day of the week, and we thank you and praise you that we can do that no matter where we are. You hear our prayers, you hear our praise, and we just give you all the praise and all the glory, and we give you this service today, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Have a seat. Praise the Lord. Open your Bibles this morning. We are in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 6. And throughout the many weeks, we actually began it while we were still present together. And then we continued on through the weeks uh, with our study of the Lord's Prayer, the Sermon on the Mount. And so that today we want to continue there and we come to verse number 13 uh, in this study together. So if you, as you have your Bibles open... And we will be reading together Matthew chapter 6 and beginning at verse number 9. The Lord's Prayer um, recorded for us in the Gospels. It's better known as a disciple's prayer, perhaps. As this is what the Lord taught the disciples. It was also at the request of the disciples, the Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. And perhaps it would always be one of the paramount um, desires of our heart. Lord, teach me to pray. Teach me how to pray. Teach me to glorify you in my prayers. Teach me to pray. When it is good, Lead me into prayer. When it is a struggle, lead me into prayer. Teach me. Teach me. And as we read together here, beginning at verse number 9, let's read it together, church. Okay, let's read it together. In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for these words. We thank you for you, Holy Spirit, impart your truth in Jesus' name. And so in this passage, let's just go down through and do just a little bit of review, but a summary, get it all in our heads, and as we really want to focus uh, there, on, it just builds up to a climax in verse 13, the Lord's Prayer, the Disciples' Prayer. And first of all, knowing that as we pray this, our Father which art in heaven, first of all, it has to do with our relationship to God. Our relationship to to God, our Father. One cannot call and address God as my Father unless one is born again. Born again in Christ. And it is certainly our privilege. The who that you are talking to is the Almighty God in glory. Just as you would read Psalm 23 and say, The Lord is my shepherd. When you address God as only through Christ, and what a blessed privilege, and when you can say, my Father, you are my Father. And, and truly crying out again and again throughout these past weeks, Abba, Father, how I need you. And the, the blessedness there, and it speaks that we are redeemed in Christ. We are redeemed in Christ. As God said, His one and only Son. So our Father, secondly, hallowed be Thy name. It is our reverence toward God. Our reverence. What's the heart attitude toward God? What's, 
my spirit rises within me to praise my God, to humble myself before the Lord. It is reverence, hallowed be thy name. God is holy, he has commanded us to be holy in his glory. When we get into glory, when we enter in heaven one day, and uh, when we see the Lord in his glory, when we ourselves are glorified, and uh, we are there in this place that we have longed for and anticipated all of our lives, it is going to be such an amazing thing. And we're going to be there basking in and just living in, surrounded by the glory of his presence, where Christ is the light of heaven above. He is the glory. He is the glory of heaven. You know, as the Bible says, there's no need of the sun there, no need of any kind of artificial light. Jesus is the light of glory. So it speaks there of our relationship and our reverence. Verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And this is speaking about the rule, the rule by God, the rule by God. You're saying, God, first of all, foremost, rule my heart. Rule my heart. Take charge of my heart. Lead my heart. Command my heart. Pour your grace in that I may obey you from my heart. I want you to take hold of me and I give you my life. You build your kingdom, your rule right in my heart. You're praying then not only for your own personal submission to Him, but you're praying for the submission of all mankind. Lord, establish your rule. Establish your rule. And for us today, just speaking of our own dear nation, and pray that God's righteousness, His kingdom righteousness, would rule our land, rule our hearts, rule the church, the people of God. So, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The rule, you know, as we already mentioned about going into glory, well, before that happens, we're going to be, uh, we're just going to be joyfully in the millennial kingdom where Christ will rule. He will rule. Is there an amen in the house? He will rule the world. All nations, all kings, all cabinets, everybody will bow before Christ. He will rule. And it will be a rule of righteousness. It will be right. Everything will be right. There will be no wrong. There will be no sin. Even though it is a, a, a rule of authority, a rule that the hearts that don't want to honor Him will honor Him. They will submit to Him. It is the Lord. And then when we go on to glory, then in that eternal state again, it'll be blissful, blissful. Every heart, every heart loves Jesus. Every heart loves Jesus in its fullness. Do you know when the Lord takes us out of here, friends, brothers and sisters, and we are glorified. And in that moment, He completes His sanctifying work in us, and we are glorified. There is nothing of the old flesh. There is nothing about us that is anything less than perfect. Glorified. Remember when Jesus said, Reunite me with the glory, Father, that we had before the world began? And He said that in His high priestly prayer in John, right before the crucifixion. There will be such a oneness and, and a likeness. It will be just like Jesus. And God is so pleased with His Son, Jesus, that He's filling up heaven with people just like Him. Amen? Just people just like Jesus. So we press on to be more and more like Jesus today. Next, in verse 11, give us to stay our daily bread. We studied on that. And it's about the resources of God. The resources of God. Every day, dear God, meet my needs. As the Word of God says in Acts, He gives to us all life, breath, and all things. Life, breath, and all things. My life is in God, comes from God, sustained by God, returns to God. Breath, He breathes in me, He functions my body, and He breathes me physically. My lungs do not pump without His Word. Neither does the heart. Just as in the book of Genesis, when, when, when He had formed man, and man is lying there on the ground, and, 
and he is a lifeless form, perfectly made, but lifeless form. And it's in that moment then that God breathed into him, and man became a living soul. It is from the Lord. All my resources, from my life to my daily needs. Bread is a very common thing, and all that I need from God. So, first of all, give me my daily bread. I, I, I want your favor. I need your favor in my life today. That's where you just lay hold of it. I need your favor in my life. So get my heart, get my mind where I need to be that I may serve you because I want your blessing. I want your favor. I want your favor in my life. Secondly, he says, and, and I need faith. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to take place. But God, you do. So as you're leading me in the goodness of your eye with your favor and your love, I need faith. I want faith. Faith to superabound. I need faith greater than any of my fears. I need faith to trust you, to keep my eye on you. And, and, and as temptations may come, I need you, Lord. I need your grace. I need your favor. I need strong faith. And in any moment, dear God, when, when something happens, it may take place that, that I am not certainly all... It, um, desirous of, will like, but it will hurt, it, whatever it may be, I need strong faith. I need to keep my eyes fixed on you. I need favor. I need faith. And then thirdly, I need food. I need food. He gives me my food. And I certainly hope that in this, in this very room, when we gather at meal tables, we take time to thank God for the food. You thank God you can go to the grocery store. It's getting a little skimpy at times. Maybe we understand how some people have to live. But thank God there's food. And always thank Him for fresh, clear water. Thank Him. We come to verse 15. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. This is our repentance before God. Our repentance before God. How we need you, Lord. Relationship, reverence, rule, resource, repentance. It's what we are bowed in His presence. If it, and it is possible in your life physically. Be found on your knees before God. It's my reverence for Him. He is the eternal King and bowed in His presence confessing your sins and as we had noted in Luke in His account He says forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. Forgiving my sins God and they are many and remember the great love of God and His outpouring of grace when you've sinned against the Lord come fast come quick. Many times Especially if it's that sin that just slays you and lays you down and, and just beats you up and a sin you wrestled against and, and you lost that one. You lost that battle and you sinned against the Lord. Well, then you want to come to the Lord, but the old devil plays in your brain. Just let it go. Just let it go. You're not fit yet. You're not ready yet. You can't yet. Well, you ignore all that. In the power of Christ, you confess your sin fast. Fast before God. Because your faith is in Him. Because not only can things happen from the outside, but treacherous things happen from the inside. Things that you don't want to happen. Places you don't want to go. Things you don't want to think and, and attitudes you don't want to feel. Repentance before God. The confession of our sins. Remember when Jesus rode into Jerusalem one Palm Sunday and how the prophecy was fulfilled. What it says, behold, your king comes to you. What's the word? Lowly, humble, lowly, riding on a donkey. How it behooves the heart to be humble and low before the Lord. Humble before the Lord. In reverence. This is he who made me. He who sustains me. The one who has purchased me. The one who guides me. He is my everything. He is the King. And therefore my reverence before Him. This is He who was a very sacrifice for my sins. Who took all my sins upon Himself. 
to love the one and honor the one who made me and then died for me to purchase me back demands my humble heart the one who has forgiven my sins and then as we studied it went on a little further in 14 and 15 and a tremendous word from God now as this is his this is the Lord's teaching to you in prayer all right in prayer teaching you how to pray so that as you pray this you're also praying in command to God forgive me my sins as I forgive those who've sinned against me careful now you are you are telling God you're beseeching God you are seeking God you're calling unto God forgive my sins forgive my debts forgive my sins And Lord, do it in the same measure as I forgive others. Careful. So what you're doing back up here in the earlier verses, be the searcher of my heart. Be the searcher of my heart. Search my heart and see if there's any wicked way in me. Search my heart. Who haven't I forgiven? What do I got to growl to in here? Lead my heart. Lead my heart. This is the Lord. And we come on to verse number 12. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is the righteousness that is from God. Don't you love it in Psalm 23 where he says, He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Righteousness, lead me in the pathway that is right for your name's sake because you purchased me and I'm your child. So pour your grace into me, your strength, your power, your victory, your glory, that I may follow your steps. And he goes on in Psalm 25, where he says, Show me your ways. He says, Teach me your paths and lead me in your truth and teach me. Teach me. Lead me in your truth. Show me, he says, Teach me, lead me, and again, and teach me. It is the calling of a heart that is just longing for God. Teach me. Teach me with, with, with things and, and things in my heart and, and unforgiveness in my heart or the waywardness of my heart, this, the strength of my heart, and, and how glad it is when a heart is, is obeying the Lord, just obeying God and, and being victorious over sin and choosing what is right, choosing to be what is right. Choosing to obey God and His Word, and, and no matter what has happened in each and every moment, you choose to obey God. And bah, that makes a happy heart, a glad heart, a heart that just rejoices in the Lord. Show me and lead me and teach me and lead me not into temptation. You got to understand that this doesn't mean that you're praying, God, don't, you know. Don't let anything evil come my way. Shield me, you know, put me in a glass bubble. 